Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and in this short video we are going to be doing group two from the Green Dozen a Day book, second chapter. It's on page five in my book. So our first exercise morning stretch we're going to work on three things. Thing number one is we're going to be working on gentle roll-ups. So that's another word for that is slow attack. We're not going to just press the keys down. We're going to kind of roll through. Item number two is we're going to be reaching out for these stretches during the pedal. So it's gonna be something like this. Play, move, play, move back. Play, move, play. And then finally, we're working on the one harmony and then the five, seven harmony. And I want you to pay attention. We do the five, seven harmony in the right hand, the thumb moves down, and then we play fingers four and five. When we do the five, seven harmony in the left hand, it's not fingers four and five. It doesn't match that way. It's fingers one and two and the pinky scoots. So making sure you're scooting to the same notes, not the same fingers. And by the way, just because of my camera, can't get up high enough to see the whole keyboard for this one. Some of the notes will be out of range of the video. Here we go. Play, move, play, move, change the pedal. G on top and bottom. Play, move, play, move, way out. Two, three, four. Notice that measures three and four are in the same pedal. Here is the side view for a morning stretch. I just want you to see the gentle roll up of the wrist for these chords. Starting a little bit underneath, rolling through the pads. So number two, walking. We've seen this sort of thing in the other exercises. The scale pattern. Do, re, mi, do, so, so, re, re. Then a chord pattern. Do, re, so, re. A different note here. Re, so. so what we're going to be working on in this, we're going to do it two different ways. First way, legato, smooth. And the second way, staccato. In the legato version, we're gonna go for flowing wrists, and in the staccato version, we're gonna go for quick touches. So I will show you that also on the side view. Here we go with walking legato. version. Ready, go. Touch, 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 roll up, roll up, touch. Three and four and. Here's walking side view for the staccato. You're just going to have a quick touch on these. Running, same thing as walking, except for that we are going to just go up and down the pentascale, five finger pattern, do, re, mi, fa, so. no, do, mi, so, mi sections in this. So again, wrist rolling for the legato and quick touches for the staccato. And I want you to pay attention that you have a nice firm bridge and that this first knuckle here is firm. This is gonna be played on the tips, by the way. So stand up, get on your tips, here we go. It's going to be really, really close to the keys, touching them lightly. Here we go. You might have noticed when I'm playing the staccato on running, I'm still doing a little bit of wrist action, but while touching. But what that does is 
because it gives the dynamics a little bit of a shape. Here's exercise four, high stepping. What this is working on is broken thirds. So I would do this, uh, besides doing the legato and staccato, I would also do this with the solfege, so we're getting used to which syllables go together in this. So when I play the staccato version, I will also say the solfege. By the way, on the legato version, I'm going to have a little bit of a down motion on the first note of every beat. So it's going to look like this. Always thinking about flow versus playing just fingers like this. Here we go with the legato. Kind of fun to mix up the melody there near the end. Exercise five, jumping. So we have three things to work on in this. In uh, beats one and two, you have a chord with a staccato and an upside down, looks like an upside down V. That's an accent and I play it, the, the way I describe that touch is drop lift. So it's a drop lift. So the wrist is lifting right away. It's kind of like you're rolling really quickly through the note. So we've got that. Then we've got in measure two, the five, seven chord. Remember, it feels different, but the notes are the same. So left hand five, seven is one, two, five. Right hand five, seven is five, four, one. By the way, it's called a five, seven chord because what it is, is it's this chord in a different position. So we're putting the G on the top and we're just leaving out the middle note. So it's easier to go from a three note chord to another three note chord. So we're just leaving out that D for that chord. And then finally, we're going to have smooth beats three and four. So we have short, short, smooth. So we're putting all of that together. Here we go. Lift, lift, smooth. Lift, lift, T, fa, T, fa. Then do, mi, do. exercise five, jumping side view. I just want you to see the drop lift for the staccati with the accents on them. So we're going to be. So it's a quick snap. Exercise six, kicking the right leg. We're working on two things. We're working on the distance of an octave from C, middle C to high C. Notice it's a line to a space. Then a measure two starts on a space and goes to a line. Even intervals, seconds, fourth, sixth, and octaves look different. One is on a line, the other one is on a space. Now on the left hand, again, we're working on that one chord to that five, seven chord. And then notice when we come back to the one chord, tied. So the left hand is only playing three times during this exercise. And finally, in measure four, you hop up to super high C. So we have middle C, one line, high C on the third space, and then super high C. Notice super high C has two lines. It's on the second line, super high. That's how I remember it. So here we go. Kicking right leg. Nice light touches. These aren't going to be drop lifts like the other one because they don't have that accent on top. Here we go. Switch. Switch. Now pop up there fast. Two, three, four. Exercise seven, kicking left leg. Same concepts, couple differences though. If you notice the left hand in the previous exercise had three note chord for the tonic or the one chord. Now because the left hand's playing that C, the right hand's just gonna play two notes for the one chord and then three notes for the five, seven chord. And then in measures three and four, we have going down to super low C, has the two lines, it's super low. Okay, here we go, exercise seven. Touch, 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 switch, touch, 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 switch, touch.
Exercise eight, the splits. A couple things we're gonna be working on in this one. One, the middle C is gonna be held by both hands for the first four measures and then replayed the last measure. Item two, so this is working on a contrary motion scale, which is the one I call, it's like swimming, that kind of scale. But instead of crossing under three and going out to the pinky, we're gonna just keep stretching out. So notice two fingers two, three, and four are smooth. And then once we get to five, it's staccato. So here we go. One, two, smooth, 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 touch. way if your hands are not large enough to do an octave just go as far out as you can if you can only go to a at this point fine but the point is just holding that thumb down let's do that one more time one two smooth 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 touch 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 roll up touch touch smooth all the way back to c two three four Here's exercise eight, the splits. I want you to see how the pinky keeps stretching out after the legato. So we'll have holding, smooth, touch, 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 roll up, touch, touch, smooth. Exercise nine, leg work. We're doing five finger patterns, do, re, mi, fa, so. Just be mindful that whoever has the half note, that finger is holding long enough. So here we go. So we've got up, two, hold, there. Practice your wrist circles. Getting louder. One, two, three, four. Here's exercise 10, sitting up and lying down. What we're doing in this one is we are working through the notes of the scale. So we're not gonna change when we move our hand up. We're not gonna change to another major pentascale and so forth. We're just gonna remain all the time in the key of C or with C as Do. So whatever key you're practicing this in, you're gonna use that key signature. So we'll do this two ways, legato and staccato. And when we do the staccato, make sure to do a roll up on the quarter notes and make sure that they're long enough. So here we go. One, two, roll down, get louder as you go. The staccati will be played right on the tips of your fingers. You want to get really stand up with a nice grip point at the tips. And here we go. Roll up, touch, 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 roll up, move. to 11 a hard trick um i just wanted to show you what i meant about keeping in the key signature so let's say if i was going to play sitting up and lying down with d as do so my scale would be i'd have two sharps so i would always keep the sharps in the key signature when i move transposing number 10 you can get really good at your keyboard geography so knowing which notes are in each scale in that key exercise 11 a hard trick this was always one of my favorites i loved doing this one this is preparing you for something that's called a formula pattern scale which is a combination scale where you play certain parts of the scale in parallel motion like this and you play certain parts of the scale in contrary motion like this 
there's all sorts of combinations you can do when you're good at scales, and this is one of them. So we're going to do each section, legato, staccato, and watch the rhythm in this. So during that quarter note on beat one, think about what's coming next. Here we go. Right hand crosses up. Staccato, except on the quarter notes. And touch, 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 touch. One, two, three, four. Now, on the next part of a hard trick, we're going to do contrary motion. And what does that mean? It means the same fingers are playing at the same time if you are in C, D, E, G, or A. If you are in a different key, it looks a little bit different. But for this exercise, we're in the key of C. C is Do. Here we go. And we're going to cross over. One, three, two, three, four. One, and touch, 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 touch. Roll up, touch, 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 touch. Roll, four, four, counts. Okay, so now we're gonna put both of those together, but I want you to notice that the right hand, the left hand's just going up and down. So the left hand, all you have to think about is getting to your thumb and back down, but the right hand's gonna be going up for two octaves. So instead of ending on five, you're gonna cross under with one and do one more octave. And then back down, then here, cross with four. So right hand's doing a two octave scale, left hand's going up and down. Let's try that slowly. So together, right hand comes under, now they both go out, cross after three, crossing, going in, cross with four, cross under three, cross over with three, Now staccato, roll up, touch, 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 come under four with the right hand, now go out, come in, cross with three, both hands, cross with four, right hand under three, left hand, one, two, three, four. Take your time working on a hard trick. Remember to cross under finger four when you get at the top of the scale from T to do. Okay, now we have number 12, fit as a fiddle and ready to go. I always love these. Now we have three chords in the harmony. We have our one chord, C, E, G. Then we have what's called the four chord, which is based on the fourth note of the scale, F, A, and C. This is in measure two, except the C is going to be on the bottom. So when you move from one to four, you're just playing finger two where it is, but moving the thumb up to A. And then in measure four, and the final measure, we have a 5-7 chord, but instead of being played with one hand in measure four, it's played between the two hands, then back to our one chord. Then in the last measure, just make sure to scoot your pinky down for the 5-7. Other things we have are full octave scales, both hands taking turns. And then finally, at the end, you're gonna have your right hand thumb scoot down after the scale. So I'm gonna play measure seven and eight. So what you're going to do at the bottom is you're going to scoot your third finger to D, then your thumb goes down a third, and you're going to end on two. Let me do that one more time. Scoot down, end on two. So here's exercise 12. Here we go. So octave scales. Thumb scoots up and back down. Left hand's turn. is measure one, cross under three, left hand thumb scoots up, right hand scale coming down, now you're going to squish it here while the left hand pinky scoots down. Thank you for watching this short video on chapter two of A Dozen A Day Green Book. I hope that you found it helpful and I hope you will subscribe to my channel for more videos on piano technique, piano literature, and also quick piano tips. Thanks again for watching.